What up guys? Welcome to the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel and welcome to the sit down where I bring on prominent guests and I interview them one on one. Today I have a special guest, Mike Buchanan. You are the author of two books, Feminism, The Ugly Truth. You can hold it up. Okay. Show the people, show the people. Lord of the Frauds, right? No, The Fraud of the Rings. Oh shit, my bad. <laughs> the, the should, we, should, we, should we do that again? Okay, okay. The author of two books, Feminism, The Ugly Truth, and The Fraud of the Rings. Show them the book. <laughs> um, you're also a men's rights activist and a politician. Well, I, I, um, I, I want to be a politician, I guess. Yes, oh. I, I, I launched Justice for Men and Boys as a political party in 2013. Okay. Um, and but we, we deregistered um, just 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 a few months ago. But we still campaign against feminism and feminists, who, as we all know, are evil to the core. And I guess we'll come on to that. Really, they uh, always seem like polite <laughs> women. They're just so so nice. No, this is a this is a looker oh, for a feminist. Oh wow! Wow. <laughs> um, but 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 we, we, we it wasn't getting traction as a political party, so we deregistered a few months ago. But but we still campaign for men's and boys' human rights and. And against feminism. So, what made you want to start that? Um, I worked for the Conservative Party for a couple of years, mm -hmm. two thousand and six to eight. Um, during which time, I, I, I basically d delivered something that was to put eleven and a half million pounds into their party coffers mm -hmm. over the next few years. And I really should now be Baron Buchanan of Bedford. So, I mean, eleven and a half million pounds. You'd think that would buy a baronetcy, wouldn't you? But there we go. Um, um, but in 2009, David Cameron, who was a, although Conservative Party leader, was very progressive, mm -hmm. as was recently Boris Johnson, um, he announced his intention to introduce all women shortlists for prospective uh, MPs, which is a deeply, you know, it's the most unconservative thing that you could, you could imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, and so... All women's shortlist? All, all women's shortlist, yeah. What does so, that mean? Okay, so basically when, <clears throat> when somebody is being selected to become a prospective MP, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a shortlist. What does MP stand for? Oh, Member of Parliament. Oh, Member of Parliament. Okay, uh, yeah, we're, sorry, we're, I forget. It's not American, just a, yeah. a British audience, sorry. Okay, yeah. so that's kind of like Congress, I'm guessing. Probably. Yeah, I never remember if it's Congress or the Senate, okay. but it's, okay, it's the... Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, so it's the, it's the House of Commons, you know, there's 650 MPs. And so he basically said he was going to introduce shortlists with only women on them, so as to increase the proportion of female MPs in the Conservative Party, mm -hmm. because the, the, the Labour Party had had them for years, and uh, yeah. So, so um, that, that's what kind of woke me up to, I think, to, for the, to, to take the red pill, you know, to use mm -hmm. that analogy, that there's something deeply, deeply troubling going on here, and it's how I got interested in feminism and gender politics. Mm -hmm. Um, and I retired around, I think, uh, about 13 years ago to devote the rest of my life to challenging feminism and fighting for men's rights. And I've never regretted that for a moment. So um, you talk about marriage and divorce. Yes. What, what's wrong with marriage today? It seems like a great, a great deal, uh, no? I think all, all women should marry and no men. It is, it is, <laughs> it is, it is, it is uh, you know, you, you'll forgive me for sort of, Restricting this to the UK, but okay. but I suspect a lot of this is true from what I hear from you know in North America as well. Um, it is no marriage is no longer a contract. Um, men men lose so many rights once once they marry. So um, the, some 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 legislation which which came into effect last year enabled no fault divorce. So a partner can um, file for divorce and their sorry, a, a person, a husband or a wife can file for divorce, and their partner needn't, needn't know about it until six weeks uh, before, before, the, before the divorce is made final. So if I filed for divorce, how long would he not know? Well, it, it could be any amount, of, probably, probably not long, but I mean months probably. Wow, so yeah. you could file and he doesn't even have to know. No, no, until six weeks beforehand. Okay. And, and it's, called, it's called no fault divorce, so literally for any reason, you know, that he's starting to annoy you a bit. Oh, he's getting boring because he I keeps talking. I had someone come on and say we should get divorced over chores. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's truly appalling. Mm -hmm. So men, men have no rights. In particular, they, they have no automatic um, rights of access to their children. And we, we can talk about the family courts, mm -hmm. which, which are, um, which are you know, tr truly diabolical. 
Uh, but people often say that the family courts are broken, but it's, it's nonsense. They're, 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 the family courts are doing what they're designed to do, which is basically to keep men away from their children so as to fleece them financially. And the judges and the magistrates and the lawyers, they're all crooks, basically, because there's, you know, the, you know, men, men will pay huge amounts of money to try and see their children. I, 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 um, I know one man that spent £150,000 trying, trying, well, in fact, his son, it's his son who's denied access to his children. Um, and he, he, so he spent on his behalf £150,000, still, still no access. Because if, if, if a woman wants to, to deny, um, deny her ex-husband or ex-partner access to the children, um, it'll happen. And, and the court, the courts will enable her to do that. So, what do you mean they're designed to do that? Because um, a lot of times the pushback I get is there's no specific law that says men cannot have access to their children. Well, there's no specific law, but but there doesn't need to be. This is this is a problem yeah. with so many men's issues. Um, th th there's no, I mean, shockingly, there's no automatic right for a biological parent to have access to their children. It's not it's not an automatic assumption. Um, they have to fight for it, um, and if you're a working class man, you know you will not have the money to do it. So, so lawyers will typically tell working class men, just give up, you know. And it's, of course, it, you know. So, so, so it drives. I mean, the male suicide rate overall is three and a half times that of the female suicide rate, but it triples again following exposure in the family courts. And now, I, I, my, 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 my the suicide rate triples. Triples. Wow. Be I mean, because well, to the family court. Okay. Um, mainly through denial of access to children. Um, now, I, I have two two wonderful daughters, and uh, the, the the family broke up <coughs> when they were eight or nine. Um, and had had I been denied access to them, I, I wouldn't be here today, Pearl. I think it's astonishing that anybody can survive. You know, I've got to be a bit careful here because you know I don't want to sort of get people thinking about suicide, but mm -hmm. what is the cruelest thing you can do to a human being? It's got to be denying them access to their children. Mm -hmm. um, but that's where all, all the money comes from, I mean, lawyers. And it's, it's, it's one of the reasons, I mean, the entire system is, is designed to, to fleece men. So, for example, 10, ten years ago, um, the, the, the law was changed so that, so that there was no automatic right to legal aid in a divorce case. Um, so, um, but there were a number of grounds on which, the, on which men or women could, could get it. And one, um, one of the grounds was um, domestic abuse. So the stats for domestic, claiming domestic abuse just went through the roof. And now in more than 50% of cases... Um, really? It's it, more than 50% it's, it's, of it's cases? It's more than 50% of cases. Um, domestic abuse is alleged because that is the way to, to ensure that you know, if you don't want your ex-husband to see the kids, that will absolutely guarantee it. Wow. Um, and of course, the, 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 these are civil courts. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not criminal courts. So it's almost unknown. It's, it's very rare, anyway, for there to be any finding of facts or any investigation. So a woman, through her lawyer, I mean, lawyers will recommend this to them, as you can imagine. So you know, you know law, lawyers will say, well, if you if you claim you are domestically abused or coerced, or what what does what does that mean? Um, then you know you you, you, could, you could have been the best husband in the world, but you get that false allegation there. It won't be investigated. You won't be able to see your kids, and that's it. It's it's it is it's beyond cruel, beyond cruel. Mm -hmm. And you said they get free lawyers if they do that. Well, this is another interesting thing. They they um, they, they 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 get legal aid. It's not even means tested. Not in almost all areas of the law, legal aid is means tested. But okay. but but for this, you know, you you could be a, the richest woman on the planet. And you will get legal aid. Oh, still yeah. for in cases of abuse or alleged abuse. Yeah. So. And, and, and but the important thing is that the 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 numbers the, the allegations of the frequency of so the allegations of domestic abuse are so much higher than we know them to be. Right. So basically, it's a scam, and everybody knows it's a scam. What's the what, what are they like out of a hundred men? How many are abusive? Would you say? Uh, I, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure I know it's quite come up with with that figure, um, but um, I always, whenever people ask about domestic abuse, I always point them to the world's um, the world's largest ever study of the literature on domestic mm -hmm. or interpersonal violence, 
And that's the Partner Abuse State of Knowledge Project, PASC 13. And they, 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 they reviewed thousands of studies. Um, and uh, they, they, they found that in about 60% of straight couples, we'll come on to lesbian couples in a minute, hopefully, but in 60%, about 60% of straight couples where there's domestic violence, um, the, the violence is bi bi-directional. So sometimes the woman will be the first to strike the man, sometimes the man will be the first mm -hmm. to strike the woman. That leaves the whole issue of provocation. It's like mutual. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. So, so I mean, that, that leaves aside the whole issue of provocation, which we can maybe talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, but the interesting thing is that in the 40% of cases where the violence is always one way, I mean, literally always, the perpetrator is twice as likely to be the woman as the man. Yeah. And this, this is, so th this, is, this has been, as I say, th this is the biggest ever study. And can, can, can I just recommend... Um, a, a book to 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 yeah, your to your supporters. Yeah. Um, William Collins um, runs a website called the Illustrated Empathy Gap, and he wrote this book, The Empathy Gap: Male Disadvantages and the Mechanisms of Their Neglect, in 2019, and it blows apart feminist myth after lie after you know it just destroys them. Mm -hmm. um, so 700 pages. Um, it's not cheap because it's such a big book. It's, it's probably got a thousand, but the ebook is extraordinary. Sells for under five pounds. It's got like a thousand hyperlinks, you know. So anybody who wants data that will destroy feminist myths and lies, that's that's the book to go for. So you you talked about children's access to parents following family breakdowns and fatherlessness. Yeah. Well, it's it's just, uh, it, it, you know, it, it is child abuse. Right. It's, it's nothing less than child abuse. To, I to, think to, women to, that do that should face jail time. I, 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 now, at one time, going back 20 or 30 years, women who denied contact repeatedly could, could expect a short term in jail. The, 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 these days, courts will very seldom even... I mean, if, if a woman frustrates contact, yeah. she, 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 she'll, she, she'll get away with it every time. I've spoken to men that um, she still got full custody. Yeah. Even though she was proven to have been not letting him see the kids, yeah. I, I think it's actually insane. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, and there, there's this feminist narrative, a lying feminist narrative, but then again, that's implied in the word feminist, isn't it? Um, that men are more likely to harm children, and again, you, you know, you look at Collins's book; is probably the best best uh, place to go. Um, more children are killed and abused by. I mean, far more children are abused and killed by their mothers than by their fathers. Wow, yep. really? And yet there's this thing that, you know, men are a danger to children. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, um, in, t in terms of, you know, all forms of abuse combined, um, w uh, m uh, mothers are, I think, seven or eight times more likely to abuse their kids than, than fathers. Wow. So it, there's financial support now for, for single mothers, basically. For, from the state, you mean? Or, yeah. Yeah. And also, also of course, from... From you know, I mean, the, the most of these men who can't get to see their children still have to pay. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I, 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 either the ex-partner will, will will have to pay, despite not seeing his kids, mm -hmm. very likely, or, or the state will pay. And of course, I mean that that you know the, the, that's why so many women will not, you know, don't don't have partners because they you know the state is you know. It, I mean, it's, it's, like it's not fun, difficult to get like on with. Funding our bad decisions. Exactly. That's like, exactly. Like here's it. a reward for. I was thinking about this. I'm like, if you make a man really angry, and you give uh, at another man, and you give him a gun and say you can legally kill that other dude. Yeah. Uh, so many guys would do it. Yeah. At their angriest, and that's what they do to women, basically in marriage. That they're at our like. When, when are we the worst version of ourselves? I I, I think. Do, do we ever yeah. wish our exes well? No. <laughs> We never, we never do. And then the government gives us, like, basically a gun to make their lives hell. I, I agree. I mean, uh, every female trait, which you can regard as a bit negative or very negative, is just absolutely massively, you know, in, encouraged. And I, I'd, I'd touch on there, you know, talking about murder, I'd, in, I'd include in there, and again, this is something that you can absolutely put, put, put at the door of feminists, abortion. Seventy. The World Health Organization estimates um, their last estimate. I think last year was was of seventy five million wow. abortions a year. 
this is a, and I, I, don't, I don't shy from using the word holocaust, this is a never-ending holocaust. Mm -hmm. We hear 70-something years on from World War II, about 6 million Jews, and so we should. But this is, this is 12 times that number every year mm -hmm. against the most defenseless. It's, I, I, I honestly don't think that any society that, that, that finances the killing of unborn children can call itself a civilized society. Right, I agree. And it's as much, it is as, uh, you know, it, it's, it's as much, um, as far as I'm concerned, a men's issue as, as, a, as a woman's issue. Yeah, I mean, guys have no say, and if you abort their child, a lot of men don't even know the girl's pregnant. No, well, there, there's no legal I obligation. Would, you know, I would know. guess that most abortions are men in relationship. Like, I, I would guess the relationships more than one night stands. Yes. Um, so what, I, think, I think if a mm. woman's in a long-term relationship with a guy and they're not getting married, it's more on her than him. She's just kind of like waiting for the next thing. Yeah, a woman said to me just, just the other day that, um, I mean, wasn't it surprising, that we used to have a big problem in the UK with teenage pregnancies. And that is absolutely, you know, they've plummeted um, in, in recent years. Um, but one of the, eight, I mean, women over 35, those, I mean, the, the, the abortion rate has never been higher in the UK, 57 years after the act. Um, but um, it's free up to six months, which is crazy. Tw tw Twenty-four weeks. It's at which point the fetus w would probably be viable. Yeah. No, so no, so that's you could you could have in a hospital two operating theaters side by side, mm -hmm. one of which is killing and dismembering a twenty-four-year-old fetus, and then the next one they're trying to save it. it. Yeah. How that is just morally indefensible, as far as I'm concerned. Well, and even I've heard that like Plan Bs and like a. Um, the other birth control can cause abortions, but they don't really cite that. I don't know if that's true. I just had another guest tell me that the right, other day. Right, right. But... I think, you know, also, sorry, this woman the other day, she said to me that she, she thinks this phenomenon of 30-plus women having so many abortions is down to them um, getting deliberately pregnant to try and get a man to commit. And then when he won't, then, then you know, then, then, then the abortion... Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, like nowadays, it's like th there's not even real relationships anymore. It's like situationships. Yeah. Like, yes. I was like, seriously, we make the worst decisions the more mate selection we have. Because yes. a hundred years ago, it was all on like the fathers. The fathers would pick. But I'm like, the more choice we have, we can't be making that good of choices if we're aborting. Like one out of three of us is getting an abortion. I know. I know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's shocking. It's crazy. And I mean... For 50 plus years, women have had pretty, pretty um, infallible contraception. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We're so dumb. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like we have all this birth control, and yet we still are just irresponsible. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, men used to know this. They used to know we are kind of supposed to protect the women from ourselves, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, what was Adam's biggest mistake? Listening to Eve. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Really? And, like, yeah. you know, because our nature is just kind of chaotic. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jordan Peterson talks about this, doesn't he? That, uh, you know, about the yin and yang sort of chaos. Women are chaos. Yeah. And, and, and men are order. There's never been a successful female-led civilization, and there never will be one. I mean, w women, women are... Disasters in, 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 in professions. You, you, t you take in the UK in particular. Um, women have been favoured for medical school places since the 1970s, 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, the NHS, I, I get how Americans think the NHS will be, will be great, but it is a complete disaster. We do disaster. not. We do not, we do not okay. think some it do, would be some, great. Some, some do. Not the conservatives. Okay. We do okay. Not. But the whole, the whole free at the point of use thing, you know, yeah. is, is, you know. Um, but it's an absolute disaster because, you know, women. Um, you know, you know, from the moment they leave educa full time education, women are less likely to work at all than men, um, less likely to work full time. So there's basically a collapse in capacity, um, which is why, I mean, as a young man, I, I could see my doctor the same day. Now it could be three weeks. Um, it's, it's absolutely disastrous. And so, so the, the drop in capacity has been in large part sorted out by bringing in doctors from the third world. These mm. are poor countries. Pakistan, India, and so on. They, they spend all this money, and then these people come over. It's, 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 it's appalling. I mean, if, if we stopped training female doctors f for a generation or two, the NHS would pick up no end. But it's true of all... Of, sorry. Of point. all professions, really. I was thinking about this. I'm like, really? If women were banned from the workforce, yeah. 
I think there'd be an increase in efficiency, not a decrease. I was thinking about this. I know, like, I think you're right. One, you, I, I, I HR think would be gone. <laughs> And I'm like, all of the human industries. remains. Because I really started thinking, because I, I, I had a tweet the other day, so we're doing a show mm. on tonight. And I was like, outside of reproduction, so not like, take the kids out of it, they're like, women give life. Yes, we know. What, like, could society function without women? And I'm thinking, for all of history, it did. Yeah, it's I interesting. I know there's exceptions, right? There's always yeah, yeah. been like high IQ Cleopatra and Joan of yeah, Arc. Yeah. But it's not the rule, no. right? And I was thinking, like, I was like, all the industries, so then people were tweeting at me, all these industries that women run. And I just would look at them and think, well, these are all the industries we complain about. The DMV in the yes. U.S., healthcare. Education. Yes, and I'm uh, like, uh. these are all the places, like, they're like, your doctor lies to you, the teachers indoctrinate you. Yeah. And the DMV is so slow that in that um, Disney movie, they made a sloth. Yes. And that's like a 90%. I'm like, maybe I guess we're okay secretaries. We could be secretaries. Right, right. But I'm like, all these jobs, they're not really, like, needed. No, well, education, I mean, state education at least, uh, the, the dumbing down of education. Yeah. I mean, 11-year-olds were, I mean, certainly in mathematics, which I guess is like an acid test of all this. In mathematics, 11-year-olds were, be were better educated 40 years ago than 16-year-olds today. Really? Wait, mean, say, by, wait, say by, that one more time. By a country mile. And, uh, wait, but, what age? Wait, so that's sorry, uh, sorry, no. 11 and 16. So there was a thing called the 11 plus until about 40 uh -huh. years ago. And so, so uh, somebody, uh, history, there's a guy who runs a channel called, I think it's History Debunked. And he had maths questions from an 11 plus from, I think, about 40 years ago. And a modern GCSE, so this is for 16 year olds. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that they were comparable. The one for 11-year-olds was just way, stratospherically more difficult than what 16-year-olds. Uh, and also, I mean, 40 years ago, most teachers were, 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 were men. And Really? Yeah, uh, but, but now it's mostly women. And it now takes, because... Why do you think that is? Oh, well, I think just through, through discrimination at the uh, oh, recruitment okay. time. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, a bit like medical schools, you know, advi you know, pr you know, would take on more women than, than men. So, um, but I mean, for years and years now, um, it's you know, m most classes in, in the secondary system will have a teacher, usually a woman, and a teaching assistant, uh, or virtually always a woman. Mm -hmm. So basically, two women are teaching kids less well than one man did. For, for, 40 years ago. And also, I mean, I also run a thing called Campaign... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I know. But I, I also run a thing called Campaign for Merit in Business. I, yeah. I seem to be the only MRA, men's rights advocate in the world, that's really agitated about the issue of women on boards. On um, boards? On, bo on corporate boards, on major corporate boards. Things like the FTSE 100 and the FTSE yeah. 350 and yeah. Fortune 500. Like, we can make decisions. It's like, get us out of there. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the thing is that... Um, 11 years ago, in 2012, I, g I gave evidence to a House of Commons committee inquiry um, because even by then, there were quite a number of longitudinal studies showing a causal link, and it, only longitudinal studies can show a causal link, um, between increasing gender diversity on boards and corporate financial decline. It, it was just black and white, so there was no grains. Yeah, it was just, yeah. And all these, all, these, uh, all these studies said... Yes, there's there's a causal link. You you put more women to your boards, you're likely to get, you know, pr profitability decline. And I've 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 been I'm almost like a one man campaign on that one. But but this insanity, the idea that men oppress women, get out of here. They 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 will. It's 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 men who've been who are driving this more women on boards nonsense. Well, and I realized I'm like they just like put us in these positions. We suck, and they just don't tell us that we suck. Well, the, the, one of the amazing things, Pearl, is that. Over 95% of these female directors are non-executive directors. No, sorry, non-executive. So it's, okay. the, the, these are not great business people. The, the, um, and of course they... What does that mean, a non-executive? Oh, it's, it's like a, they kind of review things. It's like a lot of money for no work or very little work. Um, but so they're e but, just like there because they're a woman, basically. Yeah. Um, okay. not, not, not contributing things. And... And I think one of the reasons that they're, they're so toxic at the top of companies is, is that women are risk averse. 
Yeah. So, so they they will always advise not to take risks, but, but so it's kind of like having a, a, trend, a football team with eleven goalkeepers. Well, and we we trend towards like equality and mm. egalitarianism. Yeah, you know, that's why I don't even think women should vote. That's that's uh, I, because, I know your position on that. I think that's because, fascinating because um, we'll always pick security over freedom. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, I I, I would. <laughs> yeah. You and, know, and, and of course, if, I, mean, but the, I think most men, if you put them in a room and nobody could see what they answered and you said, look, guys, ban women from working, ban women from voting, you get to vote on this. I, I think more than 50% of men <laughs> would secretly say yes. Yeah. And of course, the extraordinary thing is that women now have all the rights that feminists asked, you know, uh, were demanding. I mean, all of them. A lot of them are actually privileges, not rights, but but they, yeah. they have them all, and they've never been more miserable. Women, you know, so like the more privileges they get, the less happy they are, okay. which is you know, I mean they were happier when most women were stay-at-home mums and so on, damn sight happier than you know, than 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 than, than so many women today. Yeah. So so I mean feminism was never about equality or women's happiness. It was always about um, well you actually I remember once you had a it was either a banner or a placard. Um, when you were talking, I think in Piccadilly Circus or somewhere, oh. and it was feminism is the pursuit of fe of female supremacy. Yeah. And I don't know if you know, but there's a video um, going back before 2015. There was a um, this, he's still alive, a British video blogger called Man Woman Myth, and he he one of his most famous. Uh, vi we have 130 of his videos on our channel on our YouTube channel, and one of his yeah. one of his videos was. Title exactly the same. Feminism is the pursuit of female supremacy, and it, so it's not about happiness. It's not about it's it's about getting more power to women, destroying the family. Number one, mm -hmm. because that is that's always been uh, the number one feminist objective. Well, when I realized that there wasn't any waves of feminism, that was kind of because I always thought there was like right. first wave was good, right. right? But then you realized they were planning assassinations. Yes, at the time. Oh, the suffragettes. Yes. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, well. Does that sound like a good movement? Well, no, it's funny. People sometimes say, oh, it's been corrupted or like... Yeah. It's been... No, it's been... Feminism has, has, has been a pile of BS right from the beginning. Yeah. Um, you certainly go back to the Seneca Falls Convention in New York State, about 1850, I think, give or take a year or two. But that was... Uh, you know, they, they, they were very clear. But the, the women were privileged then. I mean, I, I know you, you really know this stuff, um, that if, if a woman incurred a debt... Back, back, back in that time, yeah, and she couldn't pay it, and the man couldn't. He went to prison. That's patriarchy. That patriarchy. Yeah. We don't need that kind and, of patriarchy. And in New York, you could sue. You could send your husband to jail if he wasn't paying the bills. Right. I'm and, like, how many women would love that nowadays? And and they're and, like, why he doesn't? We have to go fifty fifty. I know. Not then. You could sue. I was like, what? And you pointed out in your reaction video to that amazing Piers Morgan uh, interview. That women could sell property without telling, sorry, wives could sell property without telling husbands. Husbands, it would be a crime for, for a husband to do that. The idea that women were ever oppressed. I mean, uh, men actually can't defend themselves. I mean, the idea that men could oppress women. Men, men cannot defend themselves against women. I mean, until maybe 100 or so years ago, that, that, that I guess was largely restricted to the private sphere. But now women have learned how to manipulate men and abuse men um, in the public sphere. They're, 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 they're doing it. And men, men will not fight them. They will not do it. Well, I realized, I'm like, it's females' natures. We always want to control men. Yeah. And that's, like, bad for society. Do you know anything about... I think about women, always, women always have controlled men. Uh, you know, yeah, they always have. Yeah. Well, and then I found out that the first female property owner in the U.S. was in the 1600s. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, so wow. it's like what well, we couldn't own property, but we, there's women that have. Yeah, I, I, I recently, um, I, I, there's, there's, a, I'm sure you've heard of Julie Bindle, probably the most uh, infamous radical feminist journalist I've heard in, of in the Mary, UK. Oh, okay, I've heard of yeah. Mary Wallen. Well, oh no, 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 no. So th this is a, this is in, in the current day. Oh, okay. So, so, so Julie Bindle is probably the number one um, radical feminist journalist. Okay. Um, in in the UK, you really should get her on. You should interview her. Okay. 
Um, and I'll, I'll happily join you. Uh, that, that, that would be fun. I've been trying. I don't to know if she if she's a feminist. She, they don't like to talk. The, to I don't think she will. But but you can always annoy her by asking. Her. <laughs> that would be something. But um, but um, yeah. So, so 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 she has a Substack um, account, and it costs five pounds a month. But 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 so I, so I join that, and. The reason I do is 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 is, 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 is feminists will come out with all sorts of claims. There's one the other day. She just spouted nonsense after nonsense. So I could just point to a link, say, no, check out this link. You know, it's rubbish. So well, there was this old feminist. Well, it's still, and this woman came out with it. It was brilliant. Um, she said that the number one cause of death of, 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 of women, I forget the ages, um, is domestic violence. <laughs> you know. I mean, would, oh, would, let's would, start with obesity. Like, come <laughs> on, let's let's start yeah. with like heart disease or something. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just so insane, you know. But there's, but but she'd just been told all this stuff, and she just absolutely believed it all. And she was very clearly, she, she accused me of gaslighting. And I said, so I'm I'm presenting you with facts. Yeah. And that's gaslighting. What what does that tell you? Oh my you, gosh, know. you know what I realized? All the feminists just make up words so we don't know what they're talking about and they can say anything means anything. Right. That's what I realized. Because like, that's what they do in the courts with like abuse. Yes. They're like, oh, it's like coercion, coercive yes. control, mani like gaslighting. Yeah. And I'm just like, all these, they're just adding these big words. I... People that use too big of words I don't yeah. trust. Because I'm uh, like, why are you using these words for no reason? And men will not challenge them. No. <laughs> They'll... Um, Paul Lee Lam, who's probably the most prominent men's rights activist in the world, I'd say, has, has been for a good many years, um, did a, I think he did a whole video titled something like um, A Measure of a Man's Character is His Ability to Say No to Women. Mm. And I think he absolutely distilled it all down into that because, you know, I, I, I've, known, you know, I've known men sort of abused by, by partners and... It's it's a very sad thing, you know. They, they 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 will not. I mean, you know, males are taught from the earliest age: you don't hit girls, you don't hit women. Mm -hmm. And of course, for women, that's that's just a, a green light to just. Well, it's like it's just the question: is are we equal or are we not equal? Right. If we're equal, then expect equal treatment. They can hit back. Yeah. If you're not equal, then maybe like that would make more sense to have special privileges. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Like that. Like done. Then you're not equal. Right. Yeah. But you're saying you're equal, so be equal. Yeah, I mean to go back to your point about about the vote. Yeah, uh, that's a very interesting one. Um, I, I'd, I'd personally have women keep the vote as long as men had equal rights with women. Mm -hmm. now, now, feminists always say they want equal rights, and you ask for a specific. You know, if you say to a feminist, name me one area where you don't have an equal right with men, that they, they, they've got nothing. Nothing. And I, and I say to them, I can give you twenty areas where you have rights that I don't. Ooh, name them. You've got the list, I think. Oh, oh here. So it's like, I'll, I'll read them out if you like. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, is this what's happening? So, so, so the, the, these are... Marriage these are, and divorce. Yeah. Oh, I so, see. So the, okay. these are issues covered in... Our, they're on our website, j4mb.org.uk. Um, okay, where, so where, where marriage, Basically, okay. this is a list of areas where the human rights of men and boys are assaulted by the state's actions and inactions, almost always to privilege women and girls. Wow. Okay, I didn't, I didn't realize. I thought these were... I didn't realize that what this what this was. So reproductive rights, you're saying abortion. Including abortion. Yeah. yeah. But not, not 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 just abortion, but yeah. For what are you, alcohol spectrum disorder? I've never heard of this. Okay. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Yeah. So obviously as the name suggests, where fetuses are damaged by the woman drinking alcohol. Um, it is the number one cause of avoidable um, mental health in incapacitation across the developed world. Wow! Huge, huge numbers of uh, huge numbers, and um, and, and um, so basically, it's committing gross, sorry, grievous bodily harm against your baby. Um, uh. Women in the UK, and I suspect the same is true in well, in most most developed countries, face no sanctions. They can hand over this horribly, um, you know, this this this, this baby, mm -hmm. which has got huge brain damage, probably physical damage as well. Just walk away. Mm -hmm. And it's just, women are not held accountable. Right. You know, just in, in, in so many areas. Genital mutilation, that's like yeah. circumcision? Circumcision. Um, both female and male genital mutilation um, are, uh, are implicitly illegal in the UK since the Offences Against a Person Act 1861. Because mm -hmm. it's basically inflicting grievous, well, 
certainly um, probably grievous bodily harm without the informed consent, of course. You know, I mean, Jews will circumcise their sons at eight days, um, Muslims at different times. Um, so there's absolutely no question that it's a crime in the UK, but of course the, no, no prosecutions are brought. I, I tried to bring a private prosecution of, of a circumcising doctor and it was, it was refused. Um, but but um, f uh, feminists in the 1980s in the UK had uh, anti-FGM legislation brought in, so 40 years ago nearly. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, male genital mutilation carries on. It's also, I should say, people often say, oh, well, it's much less harmful. And it's, that's, that's an absolute myth um, because feminists, when they talk about FGM, will talk about the absolute most extreme, you know, very rare forms of FGM. Um, and of course, they, they, they don't care about the impact of MGM, but 90%, but more than 90% of the nerve cells in the penis that, I, never, I didn't think I'd use that word in an interview with you, but there we go. Um, more than 90% of the nerve cells <coughs> in, in, in the penis that give men pleasure during sex, they're, they're called Meissner's corpuscles, are in the foreskin. So the entire point of MGM is, mm. is, is to damage men physically. And there's, there's a Rabbi Moses Maimonides in the 13th century who said that was the entire point, so that, so that uh, Jewish men couldn't have so much sex, they'd be more likely to, uh, Wait, really? to, to remain faithful that to their the, wives. That was the point of it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it goes back to Egyptian times, so we're not quite sure what the original purpose was. Mm -hmm. But no, it's, it's, um, it's, 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 an, it's, a very, it's always very damaging, So basically. guys would have like, better sex, basically, if they weren't yeah. circumcised? And uh, apparently, huh. um, um, you know, and men have committed suicide over it, all sorts of things. Men have committed suicide over circumcision. Oh yeah, through being circumcised. Once, if they like, if it goes wrong. No, well, it always goes wrong. This is the thing. People often talk about botched things, but even if it goes right, uh -huh. you still lose ninety percent of the feeling, and it's one of the reasons that um, that 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 that, l l that lubes sell so much more in in America than let's say the UK, mm -hmm. because it actually has like the foreskin has like twenty functions. Um, but, and, and there are some amazing, what we call intactivists, campaigning on this. And probably the number one is an American guy in California, Brother K. Uh, Brother K and the Bloodstained Men. And they, they, they campaign, uh, they, they basically have white boiler suits mm -hmm. with a sort of red patch round, down here. Mm -hmm. uh, incredible man. Um, but it's just, and there's a guy called Brendan Mar Brandon Marotta mm -hmm. who, who directed a film called American Circumcision. I'm sure you can get it on Netflix or Amazon and so on. And I, I strongly recommend that. I've never, I've never heard of that. I didn't know that was like a thing mm. people campaigned for. So really, so they lose ninety percent of like nerve of, of of the nerve cells that give pleasure. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And and, and it all goes back to uh, certainly in, in in America. It um the one of the great proponents of it was Kellogg's was Dr. Kellogg of Corn Flakes fame, um and he, he he recommended it so as to stop boys masturbating. Um, or at least sort of minimize how often they, you know, um, uh, because it, uh, and so it's uh, really it's, just to stifle male sexuality. Yeah, because male sexuality is shamed. Yeah, like that's why we call men dogs, right. Right. pigs. Yeah, yeah, and, and and it's um. I heard that women used to be known as the more sexual ones. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, just, just stay on on Kellogg for a second. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Um, so. Uh, so, I mean, circumcision, if we can call it that, has always been as described as a solution in search of a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so but back in the Victorian era, it was thought that um, you know, men would end up mad from excessive masturbation, all this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and, and today, one of the reasons, I think more the World Health Organization, I think it is, is it, and the Bill Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Organization, are funding the circumcision of 20 plus million um, sub-Saharan males in a, in a bid to reduce the spread of AIDS. But the evidence behind it is, is close to non-existent. Um, it's, 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 it's truly appalling. But Kellogg also recommended the application of carbolic acid to the clitorises of baby girls, again, to desensitize them. Wow. Wow, that's so crazy. I, I've never... So, I've never heard of that. So... Bill Gates is basically funding. Well, the Bill, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which I think is very much mm -hmm. run by her and the feminist um, 
And I mean, I've, I've never known a feminist. Um, well, I mean, Julie, Julie Bindle sort of makes light of it. You know, they, they, they couldn't care about, because, you know, it, this is something that damages men, so why would they care, you know? Right. What about, it says, um, children's brain damage from contact sports. Okay. Um, I played basketball. Does that mean I'm damaged? <laughs> <laughs> it depends if you headed it. Oh, okay. um, but in the UK, at least, um, only boys play compulsory sports that, in, that involve, um, well, it's, I mean, basically it's, it's basically, it's sort of soccer and rugby. Um, where, where they like boxing where, too, and, and right? boxing, of course, yeah. yeah but I don't think too many boys sort of uh, uh, box, at least uh, not not, official, not not at schools. You know? mm -hmm. um, but but there's there's a direct link between uh, concussion and brain damage, of course, um, which is probably going to end American football one day. I, I God, I adore American football, but it is it is absolutely brutal, and the the impact on brains of that kind of concussion is, is just appalling. We we, we have rugby players who played in um, international competitions five or ten years ago that don't remember being in them um, wow. because because of concussion you know just during the game it's, it's mm -hmm. tragic and a lot lots of them get Alzheimer's um, you know much younger than the general population so so but basically it's, so it's only boys because you know and it goes back to the empathy gap it's only boys that that that, that we that we can basically harm their brains we wouldn't dream of put, putting girls making through girls through yeah. that we wouldn't we'd never do it and then you have education that goes back to teachers or would you say men are discriminated in education oh absolutely yes um again collins you know yeah. he, he he covers this supremely well in 1987 in the 1987-88 academic year um we, we had the replacement um of what were called o levels with gcse's and GCSEs have been with us ever since. There, there's a myth that well, O levels were very much about um, exams. Okay, so your entire grading was down to how well you performed an exam. And there was a feminist myth that boys did much better. There are all sorts of theories about why, but the, but 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 the statement was that boys did much better in grade-wise than girls. It was a complete myth. I mean, they were just so close together; it was almost uncanny. Mm -hmm. um, but in, 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 so in 1987-8, they introduced uh, GCSEs. And for the first time, that included a lot of teacher, t teacher assessment, you know, ongoing. Uh, and the reason, for, the reason they introduced that was that that introduced pro-girl bias into the grading. And if you look at the grades... Pro-girl bias? Yeah, so basically they, um, both male and female teachers will, will um, give a higher grade to a girl... Than to a boy, if, 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 you know, because they, they again, it may, it may be hard wiring. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, but why? why? Uh, you don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, again, it may be hard wiring, but it's, it's a well established, well established fact. So uh, uh, Collins has a has a terrific graph where he shows the attainment of boys and girls. You know, a bit. You know, mm -hmm. from like the nineteen fifties to the present day, and the gender education gap happened that year. So all of a sudden, girls spiked. Mm -hmm. In you know c compared to boys, and that gap has been with us ever since. And the 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 worst performing cohort of of school children is white working class boys, and that's been that's been true for for a great many years. But the Department of Education doesn't doesn't concern doesn't consider that an issue. You know, it never is an issue when men are doing men or boys are doing badly. It's never who like who cares, right? Um, but uh, yeah. So this was, so is it like a, sorry, could you explain the part again where you're talking about what was introduced in the schools? Like what it was Okay, like so that was continuous assessment. Okay. So so that meant that uh, teachers could give grades, um, you know, based on classwork and so on. So, 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 so they, they would, they would, whether consciously or not, would 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 give Wait, higher marks? What was it before? It was just it was, testing. It was, exactly. It, uh, oh. Sit down exams. Oh. Yeah, and that and that that of course. Oh, so before mm. it was like you you had maybe three months and then you or one month whatever it was and it was just tests. Well, you 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 basically it was um, basically tests at let's say at sixteen and eighteen. Mm. But the, the, this is sixteen year olds that we're talking about now. Um, so yes, yeah, so, you know you you'd have sit down tests of uh, exams of maybe two or two hours or something, and uh, and you, your maths ranking was based on that. 
But now but they've now, added but now it's other like, stuff. So you can do like homework assignments. Exactly, the, the whole shooting match. And so, wow. so, so, so then basically what that did was to replace objectivity with subjectivity. Um, and wow. which, which is true. And, and that where, was in the 80s? That was in 87, 88. And it's, it's true, wherever you find females outperforming males, you'll find there's been something compromised. Um, the, the, you know, um, on, on a level playing field, men will always beat women, uh, yeah. uh, particularly at the higher levels. So the, the example I love to talk about is women's chess. I mean, how heavy are those pieces that women can't quite manage? You know, the, I mean, really, women's chess? There's only ever been one woman in the top 10 uh, grandmasters. Why is that, you know? Well, yeah, no, I was trying to think of something that, like, women did better than men. I couldn't think of anything because even men are better parents if you look at the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I once had the great answer to that question. And this oh, woman, please, I've been trying to think of an answer then, for and weeks. She, she, and she looked very strained at the question because I said, yeah, tell, tell me one area where women do better. And she said dressage. Huh? She, dressage. Now, What's that? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's an Olympic sport and it was described by, um, I can't remember who it was, by an American politician as ballet for horses. Um, so it's basically where horses do funny, okay. you know, and, and, and the previous Olympics, a woman had won that. And I said, yeah, but I, I've always thought in dressage, it's the horse that should get the award, should get the medal. Rather, And this turned out to be a gelding. So I said, the only reason that this woman got, this woman got, the, got, got the medal was because of a man, a male carried her all the way. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't have an answer to that, please. No, and you know what else? I'm like, I bet you if they spent, they said it, you get up $2 million for winning this, men would figure out how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> they really would. I'm like, men just... One just... of the things that I'm amazed at is that there's, imagine your number one, sorry, 100 um, male tennis player in the world. For God's sake, identify as transgender, <laughs> and and you know, and then you know, you could you'll slay Serena Williams, you know, six love, sorry, six nil, six nil. You won't even have to pay pay th five sets. I will two tell sets. you what I do think women are better at. Oh, go on. Manipulation. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> there it's, is nobody. It's a total who super. Can shape shift and manipulate better than women. But look, we had to do that to get resources yeah. historically. It is no, it is, yeah, don't it, hate the player, hate the game. It's a superpower, <laughs> isn't it? It is their, their one and only... But going back to... Have you, um, seen, have you seen those interviews of those women, that woman that like literally hired a hitman on her husband? Yes, yes, yes. And then he comes in and she's like, oh no, baby, I did it. And like the man was almost convinced, even though he'd just seen video of her doing it. Yeah. That's how good. I'm like, what? <laughs> we, we had someone, Ramon Sosa, I think his name was, at one of our international conferences on men's issues in London. And his women, sorry, his, his, um, his women, his wife had, had taken out a contract to have him killed. Um, but uh, had, had somehow managed to. So, so, I mean, anyway, it turned out to be like a policeman. Shouldn't really be asking policemen, unknown to anyway. So they, they, they can't even kill right. So, you can't even hire a hitman right. But I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think a lot of murders of men are proxy uh, killings. But um, so in this case, they, they they obviously wired up this guy in the car and had a camera and so on, and they showed him. They they, they they took this guy down the beach, and had a makeup artist put like a you know what looked like a, a bullet hole there. And blood, and so that so they showed showed her this um, this this photograph. She smiled and she said, "Good job, good job." And she so she she was obviously convicted. Um, but um, go, going back to women, um, the 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 I, I, I don't know if we've covered this already, but at the time of the um, 1967 Abortion Act, which was overwhelmingly brought in by men, by the way, male politicians to their eternal shame. Um, like what year? 1967. I mean, like 90% of them. to get women to vote for them. I, I, it's, it was scandalous. It was scandalous. Uh, it wasn't in any party's manifesto, but that's, that's another thing. Yeah. But, but, but the average number of children that a woman would have in 1967 was around two and a half. That's like 1.2, right? Well, it's about one and a half, I think. Oh, 1.5. So it's like there's one thing, one thing women have to get right, have enough kids, and they can't even manage that. I know, that's why I'm like, men are meant to protect us from ourselves. No, because that's what I couldn't figure out why they couldn't change some of these laws. That's what kind of brought me to the women shouldn't vote, 
And it's because all the politicians are pandering to the women to get elected. They, they, they pay only to, but there is no men's vote. Yeah. I mean, I've been trying to, God knows, like, for 10 well, years I've been trying to develop it. We're 55% of the population. and yeah. The biggest swing voting block is women. Yeah. But isn't it extraordinary that, that like every party, with the exception of us when we were a party, they all go for the woman's vote. It's like it's the only way to it's win. Like, how about the forty? Yeah, but if, if but if you you know if they went for the forty five percent, no. But but the point is, any individual yeah. party is very unlikely to get that woman's vote. Whereas if they thought, well, hang on a minute, there's a pool that's pretty big over here. Nobody yeah. else is fishing in this pool. Maybe you know. Well, I think it's because of the propaganda. Like women are. It's like you tell us some sad story of a 13 year old girl getting raped and not being able to get an abortion, then we run to the polls. Yeah. They can't do that to the men are so much more logical. It's so much harder to like win a guy over. Yeah. But women, they can just like tell us some story and we'll start crying and run it. Yeah. Go we and, and men will fold. I, I used to uh, campaign quite a bit on uh, at Speaker's Corner. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'd start to engage a man. Is it interesting the difference between men and women there? Um, I'd start to engage a man and and say what, what I do, and they'd kind of like, oh. and said, and in my early days, I'd say, are you not interested in men's rights? And they'd turn around and say, no, huh. and they meant it. They're not interested. Um, where, where, whereas the, the women would very women one one of the, part of this manipulation thing that always slays me um, is well, obviously, no woman has has ever lost an argument to a man. It's just not. It's, it's never been known. But they always. I used to find, and it was very funny if, if, if it was a woman with a partner, a male partner, because the guy would just be dying a death, thinking I want to be anywhere on the planet rather than here. Because when, when I'd show this woman that what she believed was factually untrue, mm. they would whip out the misogynist card. It's like, it's, it's like if, you know, facts are misogynistic. It's mm. like, and very often it occurred to me that this is like debating with a particularly stupid child. This is this is not adult behaviour, but 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 so many women do operate, I think, on the level of children. Well, how how can we not when we've just been told we're amazing for doing nothing for fifty years? Well, in, no, that's a very, that's a very interesting area. Because, how, how good of a person would you be if you had to do nothing to be told you're amazing all the time? I know, I know. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and, and and you know, women can spend their entire lives being told, you know, through the media and so on. But you go back before mainstream, you know, certainly before, let's say, television and radio. Um, w women didn't believe all this bullshit yeah, no. because they were surrounded by, by women who were, who were they, they, they kind of didn't have this filter that women are strong, women are amazing, women need gender quotas. Do you know, do you know what I got into? I had conservative and liberal women arguing with me about this week. I said 25-year-old women are better looking than 35-year-old yes. women. Yes, yes. I erupted the internet. <laughs> yes. I'm like, you know, honestly... This isn't uh, yeah, crazy. But, yeah. I could do 19-year-old and 26-year-old. I'm 26. I could yeah. say 19-year-olds are better looking than me. I know. I, I know. wouldn't be offended. I'm like, no. what, what's wrong with these people? Like, they are so delusional. They're and, so and, crazy. And, uh, like, uh, Andrew Tate, of course, uh, Piers Morgan, when he interviewed oh, yeah. Andrew Tate, there's a lovely section. He, he kept on trying to pin misogyny on Andrew Tate. Oh, yeah, well, the 19-year-old to the 26-year-old. Right. And I'm 26. I'm like, I don't care. Uh, and, like, and, who and, cares? And was, uh, Piers Morgan kept saying, that, that, that's misogynistic. And he said, absolutely not. He said, he said uh, perhaps sexist. He said, or huh. something like that. It's just, <laughs> he had a great line for it. Anyway. <laughs> and, and, and needless, I mean, that guy is so smart, but uh, that's something else. Um, no, I know. I'm, I'm a big Tate fan. Um, okay, you said intimate partner violence. Okay. Oh, it actually, first I want to do employment. That's after education. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hear most weeks from somebody, from, from men who... Um, have been passed over for promotion by, 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 by women. Um, and very often these women are so, in, are so inexperienced that they will, they, I can't help but laugh at this, they will actually rely on the men that they've been promoted over to enable them to do their jobs. <laughs> and, you know, we, we have human remains departments, oh, sorry, human resources uh, departments, um, driving this and but it's not just in promotion it's in recruitment oh yeah we we, ha we had recently um stories about the raf who stopped recruiting white men um and in fact a squadron leader was that they, 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 they put in an email we don't need any more useless white men joining the raf 
And I thought, well, you were quite happy to have them in, in, in the Battle of Britain. Yeah. And without those white men, we'd all be speaking German. And, and life's tough enough without having to do that. Yeah, let me know how that goes. If you put women in the military, we'd be like... Well, they're, 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 they'd be a disaster. I mean, but, uh, you know, there is not an area, Pearl, I know, that women have not utterly corrupted. And, and they're, they're doing it. They, they, they spent more than £5 million per nuclear submarine mm-hmm. in, bring, in putting in women's quarters. And what do they find? There's all these immaculate conceptions going on. Um, you know, how do they get pregnant? It's just really weird, you know, a thousand feet under the sea. Um, and then they fly them back from whatever port they're next in. Absolutely insane. I mean, w- women, you know, I think women should face the military draft, mm-hmm. uh, but not be on the front line because they're a disaster. I mean, men will prioritize helping or, women or o- over, over winning God. Hear me out. Take away the right to vote. And ban them from the military and police oh, in total. Off. Yeah, I don't really see well, the. Who's going to make the sandwiches? <laughs> Men probably do a better yeah, job. I they're, bet we could. They're a higher percentage of the Michelin chefs. Yeah, almost you all know, of them. You know, we're yeah. supposed to build community and have relationships. Like that's what we're supposed to do. Have the nice communities at home but now we just pretend to be men you know yeah not well not well not well that's why i'm like repeal the 19th um okay intimate partner violence okay we sort of covered that with um it, yeah. it not being a gendered issue but i'd just like to touch on the issue of um of money i mean it's the the, the um in 1972 i think it was um erin pitsey uh, founded the first women and children's refuge in chiswick in london and she was soon booted out by radical feminists who realized that there was, um, there was a huge potential some, you know, fi- funding available through this. And they have basically you know, corrupted, I think in a given year, something like 500 million pounds worth of money, the government money goes, goes into, the, in, into, the, um, into the DV industry. Almost nothing, to, almost nothing for men. Um, and and men, men, men who are... Battered. I mean, people often ask men who remain with abusive partners why they do it. And the number one reason is to protect the children. Because they know if they leave the home, the children are going to be in the front line. Wow. Um, and if, um, if a man goes to his local council and asks for accommodation um, because he's being beaten by his partner, he'll be told that if he leaves the house, he'll be voluntarily homeless. So basically, they go from living in this house with this abusive woman to the streets. Wow. And that in itself is a major... I mean, homeless people die on an average 30 years younger than, than non-homeless, and it's a major driver of suicide. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you hardly... I mean, you hardly... It, you see the occasional female homeless person, mm-hmm. but boy, do they have to have lots of problems to, you know, to, to get on the street. Well, what I, I... There's a homeless shelter down the street from here, and I asked the one guy that runs it, like, what causes it mm. they told me like single mother homes like all these kids that were in and out of foster care half their yes, life yes 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 um yeah which kind of goes back to like why are we paying women to to leave and have kids with multiple men i know it's it's crazy um i used to you know, it's funny i used to have zero sympathy for homeless people because i felt like um I just felt like, like, what? Why are you unemployed? Like, go get a job, right. you know? Right. Until um, I started doing the divorce documentary. Ah, oh, right. And yes. I realized how many men are just like go absolutely insane. Yeah. And end up addicted to things yeah. because the wife has basically destroyed them emotionally, yeah. financially. And well, the, the wife has the state on the side, and you can't beat the state. Yeah. You know. And you, they ruin his reputation. Yeah, oh too. yes. Yes. Like, I saw a video of a guy that got killed because she falsely accused him of being an abuser. Yeah. And these guys, like, saw oh, his it's, hands it's, off. Oh, it's fairly common. Yeah. It's, the, the BBC um, all, almost, has, has almost never published a piece about a man committing suicide as a result of false, false allegations. But they're fairly common. And the one time that they did was where the mother, a, a, a year to the day after her son had committed suicide, did, mm-hmm. did likewise. And because there was a woman involved there, then Uh, the BBC covered it. Wow. I read um, a suicide note that was from a guy in that situation. In um, it was called uh, some. It was Bob Lewis book I read the other day. I can't remember what it was called, but 
And it was crazy to me that there was no coverage on it because he basically said it was because of the wife yeah. that he did it. Yeah. Like, she's ruined my life. Everyone thinks I'm an abuser. Um, took my kids, took my money, and now yeah. I'm killing myself. Yeah. And they don't they don't cover it at all, which is no. wild to me. Well, and, and the, you know, the government does not recognize suicide as a gendered problem. Wow. It, even when it funds, to the best of my knowledge, the government has never funded a research study um, specifically about male suicide. And the reasons for it. Uh, well, just who cares about men? I mean, imagine, Pearl, if the female suicide rate were three and a half times the male suicide rate. How many billions of pounds would be pumped into solving that problem? Well, and the, the first response, it's so crazy because... Uh, we just, feminists have a way of just making everything about us. Because yes. when you say that, they're like, well, women attempt suicide oh, more. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, anybody who works for a, for, um, a suicide charity will, will, will tell you in a heartbeat that most most of those attempts are cries for help. And I, I've, I've only known two people um, tried to commit suicide. Um, but both were women and both took a handful of paracetamol and immediately called for an ambulance. Um, me, me, men soon learn that... Um, if they you know they can call for help but most of the time that they won't get it and of course there's victim blaming here so 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 people will say men who commit suicide they should talk about their emotions more well I say this you know if you're if you're denied access to your children and the emotional pain is such that you would rather die how will talking to a a therapist because they can't change the reality and and the thing is like they're trying I always notice they try to make men emote like women oh. but women don't like they're trying to make men into women but yeah. women we feel the need to talk about our problems all yeah. the time just because yeah. that makes us feel better that yes. doesn't mean men will feel better yeah. doing that no i agree if, if anything like i mean haven't you ever like been in a fight in a relationship like the women want to talk about it the men yes. don't yeah like if it helped them why wouldn't they want to talk about it, it indeed <laughs> uh, the, the, i think the number one thing that stops men far more men killing themselves is stoicism yeah. Men, men get resilient. So no, nobody ever seems to say that, I mean, the, the idea that men should be more like women, oh, give me strength. I mean, that's just, men should be more like men. Yeah. You know, old-fashioned men. Um, but, I mean, women should, should, women need to get more resilient. And nobody ever says that, do they? So we get awful bloody women like Laura, I, I, I can't help but call her Laura Bloody Bates. Mm-hmm. La, Laura Bates, who runs the Everyday Sexism Project, or, or as we call it, um, the Everyday Whining Project. And her whole shtick is Laura Bates. Laura Bates. Oh, I'm you must writing have, some of these. You down. must interview Actually, I think Laura reacting Bates. Reacting to them would be funny. She she wrote a book called um, Yeah. We, we always call her Special Snowflake. So anybody who gets they know who Special Snow. She wrote a book called um, Men Who Hate Women, in which she libeled me and a number of other men's rights activists. But she she's she's a sterling example. She's you know you watch her for a bit and you realize what you're watching is. Um, a child in a woman's body. Mm-hmm. And so basically she wants a world change so that women um, don't face any stresses and anxieties and so on outside. Mm. Rather than say, you know what, um, you know, w- um, women should become more resilient. And she is, she is absolutely adored by young women. And they become totally dysfunctional, special snowflakes as a result, and they lead miserable lives. You mentioned paternity fraud oh, in your book. Yeah. How common is paternity fraud? Because the feminists just say it's overblown. It's not as common no, as we say. It depends how you define it, actually. Um, I would include in it the number one. It's interesting. Um, although it's 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 a crime under the Fraud Act, mm-hmm. um, the Crown in the UK has never prosecuted a single woman for it. Um, Despite knowing, I mean, there's plenty of women who, who go after a man for child support, mm-hmm. and occasionally they have enough brains to think, hey, maybe I'm not that kid's, that kid's father. Mm-hmm. And so then they have to pay for a paternity test, and when it turns out that they're not the father, then it's dropped. So the state knows that Flossie has lied um, about it, but she, 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 she won't get prosecuted. There's even a thing called the slapper's defence. And the slapper's defence, <laughs> or sometimes called the whore's defence, is that she genuinely thought that the, this particular man was okay? And but it's always the rich guy she knows. It's, it's, it's never. It's, it's, um, but no, it's interesting. Um, but there's, there's a form of what, what I regard as paternity fraud, which is not actually a crime, and that is 
um, what Steve Moxon, in his amazing book, 2008 book, called The Woman Racket, just a brilliant book, called Upsing. And that's where a woman on oral contraceptives uh, um, somehow becomes pregnant because mm. she's not been taking them, right? Mm. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, that's paternity fraud. That's a form. <laughs> And there's something to say. <laughs> <laughs> there's a victim right there. <laughs> um, but so, 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 so by some measure, so, some people estimate that more than 50% of pregnancies um, and, or kids are here because of paternity fraud. But, but really? Apart, yeah. Wow. Um, because that, that is, and you know, you'll get like Oprah Winfrey and so on say, laughing about it and saying, saying you know, this is, this is, how, this is how, to, how, to, how to get your man. Just, just, just forget to take your pill. Your pill. Mm -hmm. um, but no, but you know, there, there's there, there's other forms. I mean, uh, yeah, it's 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 it, it's very debatable because, of course, we we don't have any any way of knowing how common it is, which is why one of the things in our manifesto was, um, and this made the feminists go ape shit. Mm -hmm. So I, I know I'm I'm saying something right when the when the feminists go ape shit. <clears throat> and this was compulsory paternity testing at birth. Oh, so like a, a paternity test at birth? Yeah. And even if you're married, never mind, you know. Yeah. Because um, that hardly protects you uh, from, from paternity fraud, does it? Um, yeah, they, they lost their shit over that. Why would they? W well, because they, they, cause it's all about power. So they, they, they would want uh, women to cheat uh, yeah. and have, have the steady guy with money you know, uh, paying for it. Wow. Well, how common do you think, like, what percent of kids do you, like, it does, like, what, what percent of kids do you think, like, as a dad raising a kid that's not his? I, I would be surprised if it wasn't at least 20%. Wow. I'd be really, really astonished. You think paternity fraud is, what, why do you think it's 20%? Oh, well, um, Again, I'd refer people to, to, to our manifesto where we have some background. Um, there, there was a study conducted long before DNA testing um, in a village in Sussex. Um, and the, for, for whatever reason, they, 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 um, they were checking out the blood groups of, of adults and children. And I forget the figure now, it's been a few years since I looked at this, but I think in more than 20%, more than 20% of children were being brought up by, by a father who mistakenly thought that, that, that he was the father. And they knew that from the blood groups because, you know, certain blood groups, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know how it all works, but, but yeah, so that oh, was... That's, that's so crazy. Yeah. And this was a village, for God. This wasn't like some big city or something. This is a village. Wow. So, I mean, you know. So what about, you, you talk about how men are discriminated against when it comes to sexual abuse. Yes. Um, the um, something like in, in straight relationships, something like a third of uh, sexual abuse of partners is is done carried out by women. Um, the, to the best of my knowledge, there's there's no British surveys in this, but the CDC, you know, the Centers for Disease Control in the States, have for many years been um, carrying out surveys, which, which which led to that conclusion. About a third of it is is is, is carried out by, by by women on 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 men. Um, pe people find that or very difficult to believe, mm -hmm. um, but um, a third of sexual abuse is women on men. Yeah, in, in straight couples. Yeah, um, it's, it's called um, being forced to envelop or something like forcing. You know that, and s sometimes with women who 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 um, if, if it's a, dr a drunk man, there've been a, there've been sort of a number of cases of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a bid to get pregnant, mm. um, and so on. Uh, but the idea that it's overwhelmingly a male on female thing is again just one of countless countless feminist myths. But men, men will not go to the police after after an incident like that because they 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 they'd be a laughing stock. You can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, so so the prosecutions. I mean, I think it's like fifty to one, um, male female. Wow. It's uh, you know. You know, they, they, so how did they figure out that one out of three? It oh, was... through 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 surveying men and, oh, okay. and women. Yeah. Okay. Where, where, where they didn't have anything to lose really, just by just by being honest. Mm. 
Um, so it says armed forces veterans mental health issues. Ah, yes. Um, um, th I mean, th th this, this touches to, to an extent on homelessness. I mean, a lot of the homeless are ex-armed mm -hmm. forces. Um, and as, as you can imagine, lots of, um, lots of veterans suffer from things like anxiety disorders, PTSD, and so on. Um, and a lot of them, once they leave the forces, cope with that, with drugs, primarily alcohol. Um, but uh, again, I can only talk of the UK. If, 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 if um, an ex-military person goes, goes um, you know, once, once uh, the help of a psychologist or a therapist, you know, with that, he will be told he has to go six months without, without alcohol mm -hmm. um, beforehand. Well, a lot of them kill themselves in that time. They can't, they can't manage six months. They, can't, they probably couldn't manage six days. Wow. And, and that, so that, that is a question. I mean, that is just underinvestment, as far as I'm concerned, in, in mental health. Right. But I mean, obviously, you but know, if it was vice versa, there would be well, an uproar. Yeah. But of course, yeah. uh, this is armed forces, so ninety percent of them plus are, are men. It's, it's you know, you'd think if men put their lives at risk, that the state would help them afterwards. Right. But no, they they just wash wash their hands of it. Wow. And then that also ties into prison sentencing for yes. men. Yes. Yes. I, I had a feminist on Julie Bindle's Substack the other day say that women, women were far more likely to be in prison than. Than men, it's, it's just bizarre. Are they delusional? Yeah, like, are they, isn't I, I, yeah, like they just ninety percent of the prison population no, it's, men. It's ninety-five percent. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, I went too low. <laughs> I, I know, and and they're, they're closing women's prisons. Yeah, they're, they're basically trying not to imprison any women, um, and and but they're building more prisons for men. So I guess it will be ninety-nine percent. What? But no, the the again, um, I might have mentioned this book before. But yeah, but he yeah. he's extraordinary on this. But I mean, men are several times more likely than a woman to be imprisoned for the same crimes. We're, we're I mean, once or twice a week, I'll I'll do a piece. I could do it ten times a week, where a woman has committed a crime where had she been a man, she would have got several years imprisonment. But instead of which, oh, Casey Anthony's one. I don't know that case. She killed her her daughter. Oh, she oh. like buried her in the backyard, like a newborn. Wow. Oh. and. Um, yeah, if that was, was this in the states or in the states? Yeah, right. she like got off. I actually don't even think she was convicted. Even no. though it was super obvious, like it was her. Yeah, well, it's always the same, isn't it? That, yeah, that, you know, if a man kills a kid, oh, they, it's it just would, like they're, 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 they're monsters. Whereas with women, it's like oh, there must be a mental, uh, and uh, and in fact, it's it's almost unknown for. I mean, quite apart from women slaughtering the unborn in the tens right. of millions. Um, it's almost unknown in the UK for a woman to be prosecuted for killing an infant under under twelve months. Um, wow, that's so crazy. Yeah, there was. Um, I was on a show and they asked me if a girl should face jail time for taking abortion pills and killing the kid at like seven or eight months. Ah, uh, uh, yes, that was a famous case recently. Yeah, and I, I was like, yes, lock that mm. bitch up. Like, <laughs> no, and, but but of course, and, and they were like, oh, but yeah. her mental health. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, she was. Do you know, she. Oh, I'm the, I'm, we all have mental health issues. Like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, but the, the but the backstory there was that she was pregnant. So she, she was she had gone back to her ex husband, so her husband or ex husband, I'm not yeah. sure which, whilst pregnant with another another man's kid. Oh shit! So it was another man's kid. Yeah. Um, and no, it's, it's absolutely pre premeditated. Wow, they love that. But of course, feminists much. feminists just didn't want because feminists don't want any woman punished for punished for anything. Uh, and they want well. I know in California, their their feminists are campaigning for abortion up to birth. Wow! And in in this country, you can abort up to birth for things like Down syndrome, and cleft palate, and it's it's scandalous. That's so disgusting. That's so gross. But and they don't talk about what I realize too. They do with sexual abuse. They really call everything's essay now. Yes. They've like expanded the definition so much that I don't even know what it means. Oh, it's madness. No, this, this definition dilution. Um, sexual violence now, according to feminists, they'll, they'll put out, you know, every time a feminist says one in three women this, one, you always know it's a lie. Yeah. But sexual violence, willing, <laughs> this, is, this kills even me. Mm. Sexual violence includes being asked out on a date by a man you don't want to be asked out on a date by. Oh. That, 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 so these are researchers I, I that would to, generally call that sexual I violence. I didn't know. I, I'm supposed to have been traumatized, I guess. I'm so <laughs> traumatized. <laughs> um, wow. 
And then we talked about talked about that, that. the lack of anonymity 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 for suspected sexual offenders. Yeah, this is this is really egregious. And and uh, a driver of male suicide. I know you you, right. you talked about that earlier. Um, basically, any woman can destroy any man, right. just just in a heartbeat. Um, she she will um, she will be uh, remain anonymous for the end of her to the end of her days, but protect you know her, her identity. And she, but she, she you know a woman could say that I'd raped her thirty years ago. Um, I'd have no protection. I'd be in I'd be in the press. Um, I hope I'm not giving feminists some some, some suggestion there. But mm -hmm. if, if I'd, I'd hate to anyway. Um, but no, they, they they destroy men, and, and then yeah. and then they'll get you know a whole bunch of other women who say, yeah, he raped me as well. Yeah, it's so weird how they all band together. I'm like, uh, you guys uh, have to know you're lying. And, and time and again, um, I mean, Tony Danker, the director general of the CBI, was basically fired recently. You I, know, for, for for just unsubstantiated allegations. 